if you are in the left versus right war, you are in that dichotomy of left and right. And as long as you are in that dichotomy, you are susceptible to falling into the very dangerous ideologies of either the left or the right, or both, or both. If you are uh, really, really an extreme radical who just wants to fly out of that Overton window. Um, but if you are in that war, right, in that whole dichotomy, and let's say you're a right winger and you are in the, um, you are in the struggle against the left and your whole goal is to fight the left. Your whole goal is to fight the left and promote the right. If your whole goal is to fight the left in defense of the right, then you are susceptible to falling for fascism. You are susceptible to revering fascistic and despotic political parties ideologies and politicians. And it doesn't matter if you are a conservative, if you hold to certain Christian principles, if you are in this dichotomy, if you are within this, this maze, if you are in this whole, um, in this whole labyrinth of left versus right and right versus left, and your whole thing is just to fight the left, because you know we, the right wing, the, the, we are the true like fighters against authoritarianism and, and 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 despotism. The left, they're the true fascists, not us. If you are in that mindset, then it is very easy for some sort of a sinister, dark ideologue or some sort of a government official who wants to push fascist policies to come to you and convince you to follow them. And the way that they will deceive you is that they will present Christian principles. They will present themselves as being Orthodox or Catholic or Christian or, or Evangelical in order to deceive you. And that would only be used as a cover for their true agenda. And if someone were to come to you and say, hey, this agenda is evil, they're using the whole Christian face as a facade in order to deceive you, you would attack that messenger as someone who was a part of the left. I know this because I have been on the receiving end of such accusations since 2016, because it was in 2016 when I finally fully realized how evil the right wing is. Now, before that, I, of course, criticized certain right wingers. I criticized a lot of, of you know, a lot of different evangelical leaders, uh, Louis Giglio, Andrew Farley. In fact, I remember writing an article about how Andrew Farley is essentially an eco-fascist, even though he's an evangelical pastor. Um, so I wasn't completely dis you know, I wasn't completely delusional. I wasn't completely inebriated in this sort of mentality. Um, but at the same time, I was still kind of in that, hey, yeah, Republican Party, yeah, conservative, you know, mentality. Uh, even though I, I was getting very close to, especially in late 2015, I was getting very close to just um, rejecting the whole thing. And in 2016, I began to read on the nationalist uh, phenomena in Europe, and that fully convinced me that the right wing is just another dimension of evil, just as the left wing is one dimension of evil. So you have two dimensions of evil, one presenting itself as a force of order, the right, and one presenting itself as a force of liberation, freedom, complete equality, and essentially chaos, and that is the left. Um, once you understand that they are simply two dimensions of evil and sinisterism, then you can really free yourself from that whole dichotomy, criticize both sides, and not get stuck in the whole uh, deception that a lot of conservatives get themselves into, get, them, get themselves tangled into. Why do they get themselves tangled into, this, into these sort of labyrinths, into these sorts of mazes and, and traps of deception? It's because they are in that dichotomy. That is the bottom line. If, it doesn't matter if you are a conservative, an evangelical, Catholic, Christian, whatever. If you are just ceaselessly thinking about, oh, the left is evil, we have to get the left, and the right is great, you are in that dichotomy. Now, what is what is the one ideology that is entrenched in both the left 
and the right. I did a video about this last night, and this is a follow-up video to that video. Um, what is the one ideology that is so entrenched in both the left and the right? It's Darwinism. Darwinism is entrenched in both the left and the right. It doesn't matter if you're an even, you know, I'm an evangelical and I don't believe in Darwin. Yeah, but you're following someone who does. Um, because, well, we'll get to that in a moment. You look at modern day right-wing ideology, and by modern, I'm talking about stuff from the 20th and 21st centuries. You look at modern day right-wing literature, um, if you look at the favorite philosophers of right-wing internet activists, uh, they're all Darwinist. Uh, Martin Heidegger, Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, these types of people, very popular amongst the right wing. They're also very popular amongst the left wing, but that only proves one thing. Regardless of how differently the left and the right interpret um, philosophers like Heidegger or Nietzsche, um, they both have Darwinistic ideas. They both have Darwinism in their ideological stratas. So there's that underlying Darwinian way of thinking in both the left and the right. That's why you have people like Stefan Molyneux, who's on the right, who is a hardcore Darwinist. And that's why you'll have people on the left who believe that abortion is great because if we can kill the unborn babies of poor people, then we'll have less crime. And yes, there are people on the left who believe this. Darwinism is in both sides. They both masquerade their Darwinian beliefs differently. The right will masquerade their Darwinian beliefs uh, with the face of law and order. The left, they'll do things more so about you know, supporting the poor, helping the poor, lowering crime rates in, in poor areas. And they do overlap on certain points, obviously. Um, but the, the fact is, is that if your whole thing is about fighting the left in defense of the right, then you're in trouble. But if you are fighting the left, not in defense of the right, but it's just, just really for the cause of righteousness, then you're in safe waters, right? Because I attack the left, but I don't care for the right. I hate the right wing. I think the right wing is full of deception, racism, eugenic ideology, anti-immigration, anti-immigrant sentiments. It's very dangerous stuff. Um, a lot of you know anti-foreign ideas. It's quite dangerous stuff. Um, so, but if you're just if you're fighting the left for the cause of righteous for the cause of righteousness, you're okay. But if you're fighting the left because you have this idea of defending the right, and you're like, you know, the right is right and the left is wrong, then you are in the trap. That's the bottom line. Like, you are in the trap. You're in that labyrinth. And I want to point to an example in history. Um, Benito Mussolini, the leader of Italian fascism, the main face of Italian fascism, he was brought to power by the conservative elites of Italy. We're talking about Italians who were very conservative. They, have, they had Catholic principles, Catholic beliefs, and they brought Mussolini to power. Now, why would, and this is a very serious question, why would a bunch of conservative Catholics bring to power a regime whose ideology of fascism was anti-Christian. Why would they do that? Why would a bunch of conservatives who knew that Mussolini hated the church, who knew that the fascists were anti-Christian, why would they help these people come to power in the Italian state? It was because the Italian conservatives really believed that the fascists would defeat the left. So because they were, you know, they were Christian, Catholic, they were conservative, they had Catholic principles, they honored the Pope, they did all that stuff. Went to Mass, they did all that stuff. But they were still stuck in that quagmire of left versus right. It's all about fighting the left. It's all about fighting the left. It's all about fighting the left. And so because they were stuck in that dichotomy, they were a slave to the moment. And that moment 
was about the left getting power in Italy. And in order to fight the left, what did they do? They brought the fascists into power. They didn't think about the fact that they were bringing into power an anti-Christian regime. They were bringing into power an anti-Christian uh, fascist, Benito Mussolini. They didn't think about these things. They, didn't, they really didn't care at that moment because all that mattered to them was fighting the left. So if your whole goal is to find this mainstream solution to the left in defense of the right, then you're part of that left-wing dichotomy and you are susceptible to falling for fascism. That's the bottom line. And you see that in the story of Benito Mussolini. Eventually, the conservatives who helped bring Mussolini to power realized that they had made a huge mistake. And so they ended up starting to work against Mussolini. But the fact is that they brought him to power. The fact is that they fell for the fascist spell because they were drunk, they were intoxicated by the left-wing, right-wing dichotomy. So as long as you are in, in, just intensely involved in this whole anti-left thing to support the right, then you're gonna fall for evil. It's only a matter of time. How many times have we heard something like, well, yes, we understand that Milo is a citizen of Sodom and that he has said things in support of pederastry, but he is a great soldier against the left. Like how many times did we hear stuff like that? How many times do we still hear language like that? Every single month we hear some crap like that. Oh yes, while Dennis Prager has said, has said some things in favor of pederastry and, and, and the whole transgender cult, he's still a great weapon against the left. Oh, while this politician did do some evil things or he supports some very evil things, we need to vote for him, why? To defeat the Democrat Party. People are stuck in that dichotomy and as, as long as they are stuck in that dichotomy, they are a slave to that dichotomy and they will eventually, if they haven't done it already, they will eventually fall into some sort of a fascist trap. And if you look at the Cold War, you know, the United States armed neo-Nazi paramilitaries, armed nationalist paramilitaries, armed and backed and trained them. Why did NATO do this? Why did the United States do this? To fight the left. What was the justification? Because communism, because Soviet Union. What was going on there? People are simply reacting. They're simply acting as they have to act as long as they are within that dichotomy. And people will say, America defeated fascism. What are you talking about? Yeah, but after the war, America helped fascist. America gave Nazi scientists who committed human experimentation six-digit figure, six figure salary jobs in the United States. The United States wasn't really interested in fighting and destroying fascism. Yeah, there were people in the United States who were definitely passionate about that. But in the highest echelons of power, the United States was not interested in fighting fascism because right after the war, the United States helped Nazis and fascists. The reason why the United States went to war against Nazi Germany is because Nazi Germany was a threat to American hegemony. Now, I'm very glad that America won, but the idea that America had some sort of a principle against fascism is, I think for the most part, just optics and propaganda. Yes, they were indeed American officials in the US government who hated fascism and who hated Operation Paperclip, but they were a hell of a lot of people in the, within the US government who wanted, people like John J. McCloy, who wanted to back the fascist. It's a very, very sad reality. That's why I say truth is so much more dark and sinister and fascinating at the same time than fiction. That's why I don't read novels. I read nonfiction. Like, what are you reading there? Oh, I'm reading this novel. It's really scary. It's about a ghost. What are you reading? Uh, I'm reading about how the United States backed fascism, backed neo-Nazi terrorists, and gave Nazis who committed atrocities six-digit figure salaries. That's a hell of a lot more terrifying. Operation Paperclip, Gladio. Hell of a lot more terrifying. Um, Operation Condor, death squads. 
And so why did the United States support fascists in Central America? To fight the left. Didn't matter how many atrocities these death squads committed, what mattered was fighting the left. So it doesn't matter if you kill tons of people. What matters is, well, we're fighting the left. Look at what's happening right now in Southern Arabia, in the Southern Arabian Peninsula with Yemen. Saudi Arabia has slaughtered tons of people, 80,000 people dead from starvation alone, thanks to Saudi Arabia's policies. The United States is backing Saudi Arabia. Why? Well, because the Houthis are allies to Iran. Iran is an ally of Russia, so we got to fight the left. Doesn't matter if Saudi Arabia kills 100,000 people. Doesn't matter if Saudi Arabia starves tens of thousands of people. We have to fight the left. That's what matters. You can kill a million people. As long as you're right, you're right. And so that is the danger. Really, that is the, 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 the destructive reality of this whole right-wing, left-wing dichotomy that people get into. And it really takes principle and throws it out the window. Like, there's no principle. You know, who cares? Um, so that's why I, 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 I look at things so differently than I did five, six years ago. Five, six years ago, I'm like, yeah, yeah, great, yeah, America, yeah. And I was still critical because I was always thinking. But, you know, thinking and learning is a, is a process, and we are continually learning. And now I'm just like, Phew. like, look at me. Look, look. I got a Stay Woke shirt. I can't show it because it's, um, it's hard to get it within the frame, and I don't want to get too close. I don't want to bring the camera down. But I have it. Like, I, I believe Stay Woke. Yes, yeah, stay alert. Keep learning. Keep reading. And... I look at the whole geopolitical situation. You look at who America backs. America backs India. Who's running India? The BJP. What's the BJP? Fascist. Hindu fascist. You look at uh, Saudi Arabia. What's Saudi Arabia? Fascist. Turkey. The United States backs Turkey. What's Turkey? Fascist. Racist. Ultranationalistic. Anti-Christian. Fascist. Japan. What's Japan? Fascist. It was only until, I think, the 1990s that Japan stopped sterilizing people because they had physical and mental handicaps. Fascist. Fascism never died. It only went into hiding. And it's looking for an opportunity to come back. And I think that that opportunity for fascism to fully manifest itself is uh, very nigh. Anyway, hope you guys have learned something from this message. Hope you guys have enjoyed this message. You guys just heard some Theo Logi. God bless.